welcome to the vlog ladies and gentlemen another evening friday today we're just approaching 4:45, and if you have a look you'll see that we have indeed put some uh fittings on this keg oh my god i've just spotted all these widow makers on here that i must have left from when this was originally butchered several years ago. I better sort that out before it goes to the next stage. Anyway, what I have done is weld some fittings onto it. I did that today. As you can see, the welder is live. And I thought, well, I'll pick the camera up and uh, I'll just have another shout out to Mr. Martin Bailey and say, well, this is what you're going to get, mate, if this is what you're looking for. I uh, tried angling these bad boys a little bit, so I want that one to point up the way just a touch, and this one down the way, because of the configuration of the float valves. And, uh, well, this is the finish on the inside after I've hit it with a grinder. We could possibly put some pickling paste on there. If I was so inclined, this is the bottom fitting. That one's not too bad actually. It was a real state and it was a real tricky bugger to get done. So all these little um, kind of, see the little nicks, if I just get the light right. You see those little spots that look like the little pinprick holes or something? They're not holes. It's just where the grinding wheel hasn't been able to hit or take the surface down to a level, it's a pit, effectively. And you can just see the dark discoloration from the weld. A couple of this weld, this has got some sugaring on. Can you see that? That little bit there is called sugaring. And that's, uh, that's the uh, chromium and whatnot coming out of the steel, which, which is a bad thing. But for what we're using this for, it's not a huge issue. Worst case Ontario is you'd get a little spot of rust there and you could just hit it with some, with some acid and pacify it. But to get underneath the elbow on there is why I had some trouble on the inside. You can see we've got more sugar in there. And I could get in there if I wanted to with the die grinder with this carbide burr on the edge and fetch it off but you know what it's at the bottom of the tank ain't nobody but me gonna see it and of course a thousand people on a youtube video but i don't care i really don't care so the idea is here is it looks like a sexual device of some type doesn't it a pink piccolo hello <whistles> anyway uh i made this half inch BSP, stainless tube, and then a bit of a cam lock fitting. And we're gonna screw this. It's also not uh, straight, but neither am I. So we'll screw this on to that fitting one day. We'll screw it on. Might not happen today. There we go. And you'll see if I come to the side, you'll see it do a merry dance. Around and round. Look at the cam on that. It is a cam lock fitting after all. But yeah, we'll do a merry dance. It actually points up the way a little bit, so when it's tightened with some PTFE tape on it, I'm hoping it'll be there, which looks like the correct orientation. And then this will sit on the side with a little spouty spout poking out. out. And then from there, we can go forwards with the next attachment, which won't be a sight glass. I just happen to have one to hand to demonstrate that this is where you'd be taking off to the pump. I don't have an inlet because I'm going to go ahead with Martin's idea and just let the Valentine drip straight into the top. And then round the side, round the sidle didle we have space or fittings 
for the floaty valves. Now you've got to watch these because if they don't screw in far enough then they don't tilt down enough. Oh this needs deburring on the inside but for demonstration purposes we'll continue with the horrible grinding sound. There we go it actually functions it will descend far enough. So what I've done is taken a half inch BSP um, socket and I've chopped it in two, chopped it into two pieces. I'm sure I had another one on the table up here for which I can demonstrate to you. So we did get two fittings out of one, that one and that one. And then the bottom is just a female, female, 90. One of these. Oh, do I have one? There it is. I would have preferred to have a street elbow in there, actually, because I've welded it up, and obviously, on the inside of here now, we do have threads. There are threads in there. And then I thought, well, actually... On second thoughts, I could screw a filter into that if I needed to in the future. Just like a bazooka tube. Possibly use this as like a hop rocket at the end of the boil. Same situation, but fill it with hops. I never will because I just dry hop in the kettle like a whirlpool down. But it's an option. Or let's say your filter in your mash tun isn't really that great and you start to get a bit of grain coming through the valentine or whatever other option you've got for the wart to get into the underback so basically long story short if grain gets in i could put a, fil put a filter in there so grain can't get out that's one option this i thought might need welding to the side here fucking no chance that is going nowhere it's solid absolutely solid um so just a little bit of tidying up. When I cut these as well, I've noticed I did notch all the way down there. So I just need to put some repair welds on those little bits and uh, clean up the widow makers on here. And then we are good to go. That is under back 95% complete, I believe. Then moving on to the control panel, I've tested it. Just put that there. Tested it, and it works. In fact, it works exactly how we wanted it to. And it does splice into the pump, as you can see over here. I've already had the cable apart. And uh, yeah, it fits in perfectly. So I've just got to screw these two into the underback, bolt this on the back probably hot melt glue the cables out of the way or something daft like that and then it is job done i just need to make the valentine next but not today it's freaking friday so something very surprising happened today i happened to get a knock on the door and uh, there was a young gentleman there with what i believe i'm terrible at remembering things was his partner girlfriend wife could have been his sister but that'd be weird anyway knocked on the door and uh, he'd been trying to get in touch with me to come and pop these in these beers so he's doing a bit of a trip around the uk and uh, his lovely lady friend had come over from australia and brought these with him and i think he's originally from new zealand way on and she's from australia and uh we had a good chat for half an hour or so, socially distanced of course, he was stood over there and I was stood over here and then we walked down here and then they stood there and I stood over there and we chatted and he had a mask on and it was all above board, nothing to worry about at all, but uh, brought these beers across and said would you like some and I said oh thank you very much, yes please. So we have from Garage Project, uh, Cereal Milk Stout breakfast brewed with real cornflakes i'm really intrigued 4.7 percent 
Uh, I'm really intrigued getting in with these. This, I love this one. Penacious Weed. Look at this can label. It's freaking awesome. Nelson and Raku hops. And uh, I wonder if it's got any cannabinoids in it. 8%. Well, you probably not know, would you? But, uh, yeah. Absolutely great branding. This one here is Golden Path. Oh, these beers are going to be so interesting. Juicy, hazy, hot bomb. 4% alcohol. I really am grateful for these beers, by the way. Uh, I know it was all a little bit strange with the meeting that we had, being obviously you guys were masked up and I was a little uh, taken aback, actually. It's always really nice when things like that happen. And uh, you don't expect them. Here we have... Hops on point, champagne, pilsner, and finally, we've got white mischief, a salted white peach stout. Really, really interesting stuff. Also brought me a couple of posters from the garage project, so I'll stick them on the wall somewhere, or maybe I'll frame them and put them in the pub. But Owen, thank you very much, mate. I am much obliged and if you weren't uh, gluten intolerant, mate, I would have loaded you up with a load of my beers for you to enjoy on the rest of your trip. But I don't want you to cause, I don't want to cause you to have any explosive negative results, of course. Anyway, <laughs> less said about that, the better, I think. Let's go back into the workshop and uh, probably wrap up the video for the day. It's only a bit of waffle. It's Friday, after all. I really should be uh, really should be getting her home. See the kids. And Gemma said she would like a bottle of wine tonight. So <laughs> that might be in, boys. We don't know. Probably not. Uh, anyway, you can see me in the window there. I'd like to say thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you could follow what I was talking about with this underback. I can't wait until we're in a position to get brewing again and actually use it. Jesus Christ. I mean, I, that kit just sat out there gathering dust. I need to give it a clean. And, uh, yeah. The video really started more to just warn Martin. Uh, get yourself a... <laughs> a die grinder mate and some burrs some carbide burrs because uh, I'm a little bit out of practice thanks I'll see you on the next one